Hey, hey. Hello, everybody. Uh oh. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, everybody. I'm going to let the, the notifications go out. Y'all, I had the live stream set up for 5 a.m. And we are not live. I was not even up at 5 a.m. And I'm so sorry for that, y'all. And it's way before five o'clock in the evening. Hey, Melissa. Hey, y'all. I'm so sorry about the mix up. Hey, 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 everybody. Hey, Jasmine. Hi, Karen. Queen Cha Cha. Y'all coming on in. Hey, William. Kayla, I'm well, thank you. How are you? Dorita, I see y'all. I see y'all. This is a different time for me. I uh, moved the live stream up because I have a uh, I have an event this evening that I completely uh, forgot about. And I got to get in to see y'all. Hey, Dina. October's finest. Hey, Miss Linda. Hey, Deb. Miss Deb in the house. VIP, VIP. Hey, hey. Hey, Kimberly. Thank you so much. We just finished our group coaching for those that um, are VIP members. Hey, Erin. Thank you so much, Miss Deb. Uh, let's see. Kimberly, Deanna, Erin. Hey, Carla. Carla Macmillan, I see you in the house. Hello. Thank you, Lillian. You're so sweet. Thank you so much for your generosity. Thank you for the uh, super chat, sis. God bless you. Thank you. Let's see. We have Christina. Uh, let's see who else we have coming up in the chat. I don't know how many we'll have on this early. Hey, love and peace, Tony. Um, let's see. Queen Leandra. Hey girl. Hey Mia Brown. Y'all, I'm so sorry about this morning. We had that. Um, I had the live stream slated for 5 a.m., not 5 p.m. And then I have an event this evening. So, and I've completely forgot about that. Hey, Hannah. Let's see who else we got in the house. Okay. Thank y'all so much. Thank you for uh thank you for popping in, jumping in on the live. Um, Tamika, I see y'all. Thank you, Justin. I see you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Um, please don't forget to hit the like button um as you enter the chat. You all are amazing. Thank you for that. Okay. Hey, Free. Aaron, what'd you say? Thank you, Miss Telsha, for all you do. I'm one year no contact. Woo -woo! Yes, honey. Yes. That is so awesome. Congratulations. That's beautiful. One year, no contact to God be all the glory. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, y'all. So we're going to get ready to get, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, I have a, I have a word I, that I have to release um, regarding the trust. And um, thank you all so much for um, sharing the video, sharing the live stream. But we're going to go ahead and get started. So I want to just ask a question. Um, Reginald, I see you in the house. Listen, how many of you all are seriously battling? Because, I, you know, I like to always understand why God gives me certain messages. Um, 
Siri, I know with narcissistic abuse, we do have that whole issue of trust. Lillian, we have another VIP in the house. Thank you so much. She said, love you so much. You helped me a lot. Praise God. To God be all the glory. Hey, Stella from the UK. Hello. How many of you all are seriously battling this trust uh, issue? I know some are healing and moving forward, but by show of ones in the chat, like it's really bad. Hey, Karen. Thank you, Karen. By show of ones in the chat, like it's really, it's a really bad thing. Like it's preventing you from moving. And when I say bad, it's like preventing you from being in another relationship, preventing you from, you know, a lot of different, it's, it's holding up parts of your life. Let me put it like that. Because trust doesn't just, um, trust isn't not just, it's not just a relationship thing. It can bleed over into several different areas of your life. Okay. So it's not just in uh, relationships, but it's just the trust issue, period. Okay. I got you. Okay. Okay. So let me bring up scripture because I want to do that first. Let's get into scripture. And um, this will help us uh, to at least get in the, in, uh, into the thick of it. Proverbs. I want to go to Proverbs 3. Uh, this is Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Let me see if I can get this in the King James Version because most of us read that. Uh, KJV. Okay. And this is Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. And it says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto your own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. I think this is a very powerful scripture. And I'm going to break it down for you. I'm going to show you what this actually means. Okay. Where we're going, where, where, where is the Lord trying to take us in this wisdom that he's given us with this scripture? Okay. So when it comes to um, trust and where uh, we suffer, First of all, the enemy knows that if he can destroy your trust, he can destroy your faith. OK, and trust and faith walk hand in hand. Why do you say that? Trust and faith walk hand in hand because you have to have faith in order to trust. Right. And vice versa. So they the two are parallel. They walk hand in hand. Now. When trauma enters your life, what trauma does is trauma is designed to destroy your trust, which will also destroy your faith. OK, now for those of you and, you know, those of us out here that are believers, we must understand that. Watch this. Watch this. And give you another scripture. We must understand this let's go over to hebrews 11 verse 6 okay hebrews 11 verse 6 and this is from the king james version and it says but without faith it is impossible to please him for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Do y'all see how powerful that is? Look at that. Wait a minute. Let's go back. So Proverbs says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to your own understanding. So what that's saying is that even when you don't understand it, you still need to trust him, Right. In all thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. This is so powerful. It says in all thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. But watch this. When trust comes in, when trust is being destroyed, it is being destroyed in every in, in every area of your life. OK, 
trust doesn't just come to uh to remove your faith in relationship i mean trust issues do not come to just remove uh, the faith in just relationships or trust in relationship area, it comes in to remove trust in every area of your life. So it's so paramount that the scripture says in all thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. So what does the enemy do? He's going to attack you with the, with the trauma of being misused, abused by narcissistic or toxic people. But not only that, it's not going to just destroy your relation or destroy your ability to trust in relationships, but that trust issue is going to bleed out all over your life. And it started with the trauma. But then we go over to Hebrews and what did he say? Because trust mistrust and not being able to trust means that you're not going to be able to believe God either. Because remember, the two are parallel and they walk hand in hand. But Hebrews 11 and 6 says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Ah, so let's roll it back. Let's go back. So what this means is that, listen, when your trust and your faith has been destroyed, you can't even please God. There's no way. You don't have the ability to even, you don't even have the ability to pull anything down from the heavenly realm. Why? Because faith is the currency of heaven. I want somebody to get this. Are y'all getting this? You're tracking with me. Let me know you track it with me because this is so powerful, especially for those of you that are dealing with this trust issue, because what God is saying is it, he, what he's saying that is that in this hour, there's no way that you're going to be able to pull what you need to pull from him and to get what you need to get in this day, in this hour, without having the ability to trust him, which is your faith in God. Oh, mm, mm, mm. that's your faith in God. Okay. So let's roll it back. Let's roll it back. So when we are dealing with the aftermath of these relationships, right? The aftermath of being in this narcissistic situation, the thing that we battle with most is the thing that we need the most. We got to trust God to heal us. But how are we going to trust him to heal us when we have no faith or no trust left in us? This is hard, y'all. This is hard. This is not a, um, this is not, okay, let me just get over this and let me just move on. No, it is, this is not that. And that, that is not this. This is very serious. And when you understand the magnitude and the depth of how this affects us as people, then we can go to another level in God. But you cannot get to that level of healing and restoration if you don't understand that trust and faith walk hand in hand. Y'all. Okay, so what is what has happened to us? Thank you, highly favored. Welcome to our VIP. Thank you so much. I appreciate you for jumping in. So what is what has happened? You have been attacked in a place that is meant to basically cripple you for life. It is meant to make you live a life of despondency, a life of stagnancy, a life of frustration, aggravation. And eventually what will happen is if we don't address these issues in life, we will die not ever knowing our purpose, not ever knowing our destiny. Because this is what it's meant to do. It's meant to basically put you in a shell or a capsule and that you would live a life beneath your privilege and you will never be able to live and thrive. You will only exist. Hmm. 
Do you know that certain situations come into your life just for your faith to be built up? God will allow certain situations to come into your life just so he can build your faith, just so he can take you to another level and another dimension. Because where he's trying to take you, your, your, present, your present life will not allow you to go there. So some things have to happen in order, in, in order for your, your faith to be built, in order for that faith to begin to go to another level and another dimension. You have to have what we call aggregates in your life, something that is going to come to aggregate in your life to cause you to trust God to go to another level. Now, if this relationship with the narcissist sends you in the other direction, Lord, help you. Lord, help us. Right. Because I'm not excluded from that. I am also included in that. I'm not excluded. So this is what the enemy does through toxic relationships and trauma. You are hit in the most vulnerable part of your soul. Right. Which is in your emotions. That's the most vulnerable. Why do we say that the emotions are, are the most vulnerable? Because they're the easiest to get to. Somebody gonna catch that in a minute. Your emotions are the most vulnerable part of your soul because it is the easiest for the enemy to access, okay? Because if you don't understand who you are and whose you are, if we don't understand the power that worketh within us, then our emotions are all over the place. And I think I've said that to you before, is that the, the, the level of control that we have over our emotions speak directly to our spiritual maturity. When the enemy can hit you in a place and you start reacting, because remember, he's a narcissist. The enemy is a narc. He is. He's, he was the first narcissist ever on, on, on this planet. But when he can hit you there and you begin to react, guess what he knows? You don't know your power. You don't understand that your you don't understand your power nor your spiritual positioning, right? And he also understands that you don't understand your spiritual ranking. That's not just for you. That's for me too. OK, it's for me, too. So when when we start to when we start to react and we start to allow our emotions to show themselves, then what we do is we are we, we are basically opening up and we're showing the world our vulnerability. Mm, mm, mm. We're showing the world our vulnerability. And so as we show the world our um, vulnerability, then what, what happens is the enemy begins to see that and he knows, watch this, he knows where he can attack us because that is the most vulnerable part of your soul is your emotion. It is the easiest place for him to get into so that he can enter the mind so that he can begin to control the mind, watch this, and then be begin to control your will. Somebody going to get that. So what happens is you see how that works. You see the progression of it, but the vulnerability started with your emotions. So he's going to go for what's most vulnerable. What, what is the easiest thing to get to? So once he hits you there and he can open up those emotions and he can hit you right there. Now he's already hit you with the trauma. Okay. That, and guess what? The trauma got your emotions all over the place. You see how that works? Look at that. And most of us got hit with it in our in the infancy of our lives, meaning in the in the very early primary stages stages of our lives, because it's important that the enemy gets you and hits you with that trauma as soon as possible. This is why y'all see the attack is on our children spiritually. This is where the attack is. It, the enemy is fixed and focused on the children. And this has not changed. This has been for centuries, right? 
He's been attacking the children for centuries. This is where you, and he knows that if he can get us in our infancy, in our primary years and destroy our ability to trust there, then what he's done is he set up a demonic altar that will cause us to be frustrated and walk in a place of despondency for the rest of our lives if it is not addressed. I want somebody to please get it. Please get it. Please get it. Because so many of you are missing out on opportunities and things that God have for you. He has it for you. They're already stored up in the spiritual realm. The Bible says that he has given us all spiritual blessings. Let me bring the scripture in. Okay, here we go. Let's go to let's let's uh let's find this in the KJV. Okay. So let's go in KJV. I just I want to bring the scripture in because I want you to understand what I'm saying here. Because this is going this this will affect you. Okay. So this is Ephesians 1 and 3. Okay. Blessed be the blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus. Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on. Let's back it up. So what you're saying, what the scripture is saying is that all blessings come spiritually first. They come out of the parent world. Are y'all getting this? The blessings. So in order to access them, you got to be able to tap into that realm, which is going to require that you have faith in order to pull it down. So what does that mean? It means that there are things that are stored up for us. Literally, he has given us all spiritual blessings. Why? Because we are spiritual beings having an earthly experience. So that is letting you know everything that God has for you. It is in the spiritual realm, but you have to mature in this realm in order to pull it down. Because it's not that God is denying it. It's just that he is not going to give it to this version of who we are. Can you imagine? Watch this. God being the father, him being over everything. He got riches, houses and land, cattle on a thousand hills. It all belongs to him. You're his child. I'm his child. We're his children. We go to him and say, now you don't know how to manage money. You don't know how you don't know the first thing about investments. You don't know how to um yeah, you just have a problem with managing. You know, you 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 can't manage the little bit that he's given you, right? Why in the world? Because he he's already told us, don't cast your pearls before the swine. Let's go to the scripture. We're going to go back. Thank you, Patrice. God bless you. Thank you so much for the blessing, sis. Thank you, Miss Patrice. We're going to go to the scripture. He says, do not cast your pearls before the swine. This is what he teaches us in Matthew, 6, Matthew chapter 7, verse 6. This is what he says. He says, give not that which is holy unto the dogs, Neither cast your pearls before the swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. Okay. So this is what he teaches us. This is what, what Matthew chapter seven and six says. So why in the world would he give us millions of dollars in your hand as his child when we don't know how to manage it? 
That's casting the pearls before the swine. Not that we're swine, but what it means is that he's not going to give you something that you have no ability or the concept to handle. He's not going to do that. So if you're asking him for something that is outside of your level of maturity, how he's going to give you that? And that also means relationships. That also means opportunities. Because what happens is with this trust thing, when we haven't risen and we have not matured to the level where we can trust him in certain situations, he's not going to be able to bring those things about that we're asking him for because our level of faith have not reached that place where we would be able to maintain and sustain the blessing. Hello, lights. Mm, mm, mm. Y'all, this thing ministering to me too. Mm. Hello, lights. Hello, floor. Hello, chair. In this day, in this hour, Gwen, come on. Sure, I, 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 I'm trying to help you and I'm helping myself too, Deanna. Come on, Joe. Because it is necessary for these things, this trust issue, it has to be addressed. We have to realign ourselves. We have to recalibrate. We got to take that vulnerable place in our soul and it needs to be protected through prayer and fasting and reading the word of God. So what does that mean? our ability to control that most vulnerable part of our soul, which is our emotion. It has to, we have to grow and mature in that area of self-control to be able to control that place so it's not vulnerable, okay? Because if it's open and vulnerable, the enemy is going to continue to hit you there, which lets him, lets him know that not only, and not just hit you, but hit me too. It's going to let him know that we haven't matured in that area. And every time he hits us, Vanessa Marie, he understands that that we when we react, when we react to it, instead of responding with the word of God, instead of responding in prayer, instead of responding in fasting, he understands that when we react. That we have not yet matured in that place. Hmm. Mm, mm, mm. So what he does is he sends another attack in. How many of you going to testify that you have more than one narcissist? Let me go ahead. Let me go ahead and put my two in the chat by the by show of twos in the chat. Let me go and put mine up there first. How many of y'all had more than one? By show of twos in the chat. You had more than one. I'm going to show you how the enemy works. Show you what he does. How he gets down with it. Mm -hmm. This is what he does. Y'all see them twos going up in the chat? It's not enough that you probably dealt with one in your bloodline. Look at this. But now, so he attacked you in your primary years and some people in their infancy do you know that some of y'all, some of us came out angry? Do y'all know that babies can be attacked in the womb? Raise your hand, put a hand up in the chat if you know that babies can actually be attacked in the womb. Put your hand up. Just, just put a hand up there. Just put a hand up there. Yeah. Some of y'all, you, your mother told you, all you used to do is cry, 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 cry. Just crying. And you were, some of y'all were told you were just the cryingest baby. I mean, you would just cry. I mean, it just didn't. How many of y'all, look, go on and throw a three in the chat. I just want y'all to really walk with me. I want y'all to walk with me because I really want to lay this thing out so so clear so you really really understand how many of y'all you were told that you just 
you were just a crying baby. You cried about everything. Put your three in the chat. Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. I because because the enemy he'll he'll hit you in the he, he don't care. He don't care. Some of y'all look look at these threes coming up in the chat. You was a cry, you were a crying baby. Yeah, and guess what? Those of you that are putting these threes in the chat, watch this. Watch this. I, I, I'm, I'm getting ready to help you right here. Those of you that are putting up those threes in the chat, y'all have problems with anger and unforgiveness. Do you not? The people that put threes in the chat, go ahead and put your yes in the chat if you if you battle with anger and unforgiveness. Just just hit just yes. Just put your yes in the chat. Yes. If you if you I, I'm gonna show you how it works. Look at Kayla. Kayla say yes. Yes, Eddie. Yes. See? You see that? You see that? Why would a baby so innocent and pure come just crying and crying and crying? You just got here. Look at this. Joe, look, look at look, look at what look at what Miss Joe said. Look at that. She said anger, unforgiveness, grudge. Look at that. I'm telling y'all. I'm telling you how it works. Hit you in the womb. Look, Yogi B. She says, yes. She says three. Yes, definitely unforgiveness. Hit you in the just angry. You know why? Because that spirit attacked you in the womb. It attacked you in the womb. Why? Because a lot of times the mother is young, don't understand spiritual things, or was experiencing that in her own body. And most of y'all, it's generational. Hello, lights. Your parents suffered with anger and unforgiveness. Yeah. It's generational. So it's not, and what I'm trying to say to you, it's not natural for a little baby to just come here screaming and yell. I mean, the baby is not sick. The baby is not in pain. There's no illness there. There's nothing happening. And there's no earthly reason why this baby should just be screaming and hollering like that. No colic, nothing. Baby just mad. Just a crying baby. You look at the baby, the baby just holler. That's indicative. That's unnatural, y'all. How could this baby come here so peaceful and just so, I mean, that's what babies are supposed to be, cute and wonderful. And, and look at, look at Miss Patrice. Look what she said. She says, still holding unforgiveness and bitterness against my ex-narc and ex-friend. Tell me y'all how it happens. Hit you right there. That's how low down the enemy is. But he's a legalist. And he understands generational curses. He understands things that about the spiritual realm that we don't understand. And he understands that if you are subject to a generational curse because of what exists in your bloodline, he has the right to attack you even in your embryonic stage. Y'all, this is too deep. This is too deep. Some of y'all ain't going to be, it, it, some folks ain't going to even be able to rock with it because they're going to ask, why would God allow the enemy to do such a thing? It's not about what God allowed. It's about what your ancestor did. Yo, the people that came before you did. It's about what they, what they did, what they allowed that set up the generational curses that caused you to be attacked in the womb, to be angry, to despondent and unforgiveness. Then you get out and you just don't even have trust by default. By your default is no trust. Woo, Holy Spirit. That one right there. Oh, y'all, I feel like, I want to, listen, I feel like throwing something. That thing hit my spirit. Did that, did that hit you? Your default is no trust. I feel like running. I feel like I want to take off running. Your default, because of what has happened to you, 
what you were born into, your default. That's your default. How is that your default? Come on. That's the default? That's your default setting. Hey, Jesus. Help us, Lord. Help us. Uh, three Red Stallion, thank you so much. Says, thank you, Miss Telsha, for opening my eyes. Blessings to you and blessings to you too. Thank you so much for that uh, super sticker, your generosity. Thank you. Your default. Joe said, my mother died when I was three and I got worse. Look at that. Not only was she hit in the womb, but look, that's traumatic. To lose your mother at three. So you being left to left to the person that that didn't even bore you to to raise you and to have your back. We don't know. I'm just showing you how deep this trust issue goes. Because when you get attacked in, a, in, in when you're most vulnerable because of what exists in your bloodline, you, we cannot afford to not understand spiritual things. We cannot afford to, to not understand the legalism or the legalist that the enemy is. This is why you get more than one narcissist in your life. And I did too. This is why this happened. Just showed you. Those of you that came out angry little babies, crying and crying and crying all the time. You got hit in your infancy, in your embryonic stage. The enemy, this is why some of y'all, some of y'all don't know or don't understand this, but sometimes if there is a spirit of premature death in the bloodline, some of y'all uh, probably were hit, ladies. I know I was. Let me go ahead and testify and put my business out there, Shy 300. I've had two miscarriages. Two. Not, not one, but two. The enemy is such a legalist. If there is a spirit of premature death by way of if somebody has had an abortion in your bloodline, if there is some type of um, murder or death in the bloodline that hasn't been addressed, the enemy can come hit that embryo right there in your womb. And this is how it goes down. The doctor tell you, you have a, you have a hormonal imbalance. Just saying. Something wrong with your hormones. The enemy done attacked you in your systems. Your hormones, your this, your the anatomy of your womb uh, caused this, that, and the third to happen. Look at Miss look at Doretha King. She said, I lost two babies. I did too. Two miscarriages. Two. Do you really think? Do we really think that that's the will of God for our lives? When he said, I would that you prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. That's what he said. Let me bring out the scripture. I'm a, you know, I always want to get scripture. This is what he said. I'm gonna go to another one too. I'm gonna I'm give y'all. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna help some folks and myself. Where is it? Third John two. Third John two. And five. Through five, let's read it. He says, beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in good health, even as thy soul prospers. Verse three, for I rejoice greatly in that brethren came and testified of the truth that is in thee, even as thou walkest in the truth, right? And then he goes on in verse four and says, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. 
And verse five says, beloved, thou doest faithfully whatsoever thou doest to the brethren and to strangers. But in verse two, he clearly says to you, third John two, third John verse two, beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in good health, even as thou thy soul prospered. Now, that, does that sound like a God that want to kill your children in the womb? No, no. This goes back to the bloodline. It's deeper than what you think. This trust goes deep, y'all. This is deep teaching and revelation. If you can't get this, you will never be able to destroy that unforgiveness and you'll never be able to attack that beast in your life that won't allow you to trust. You'll never be able to pull down those spiritual blessings because I already gave you scripture on that. He said he's given us all spiritual blessings. That means that your blessings start over in the spiritual realm. You'll never be able to pull it down because we've all already established that without faith, it is what? Impossible to please God. That's Hebrews 11 and 6. Listen, some of us, I, I took you back even to the infancy stage, even going into the embryonic stage. Some of y'all testified how you were, you were told that you were a crying baby. And I, that's not natural, y'all. It's not natural for kids to just come out crying like that. What's wrong with them? Ain't sick. Nothing's wrong with them. Attacked. And you can't say, oh, God would not allow that to happen. It's not about what God allowed to happen. It's about what exists in the bloodline. This is why you have to pray over your womb, pray over your unborn child. You got to do battle the moment you find out. Or the moment you find y'all find out that your children are having children, you better start doing battle in the realm of the spirit as soon as you find out that that uh, baby has planted in that womb. You got to start fighting right there. You got to start fighting. Because if you don't, what's going to happen is you leave that baby, that vulnerable embryo that is developing, you leave that baby uncovered. I feel like I want to run. I, I feel like taking off running because the enemy don't want this. He, he don't want this. He don't want y'all to know this. I want to listen. I feel like throwing my shoe. This is so powerful. You leave that baby, that embryo that is growing inside of the mother is left uncovered. We can't afford to do that. Daryl, thank you so much. He said, man, I gave this woman everything I could and got ghosted. This is a serious ancient demon. Just glad I'm healing. Look at that. Thank you so much, Daryl. Thank you for your generosity. Y'all, I'm telling you, if you get this, I know it's deep. I know some people are not going to be able to, they're like, I can't even rock with that. Because their level of maturity has it spiritually, they haven't matured to the place spiritually to understand the laws. There are spiritual laws and principles that exist that if you don't know about them, you are at a you are at a grave disadvantage. The enemy don't care that you don't know. Oh, you think I can't? Uh, the enemy sitting back thinking he's sitting back laughing, licking his chops. Oh, you think I can't attack your baby in the womb? Don't you know that I'm a legalist? The enemy is like a crooked, broke down lawyer, okay, that understands spiritual law. If you don't know it, when you go show up in the courtroom, in the spiritual courtroom, when you don't, if you don't know it, guess what? You standing there like you don't, you don't have your Bible. You don't have your manual. You don't understand spiritual law. He going to take you to that spiritual courtroom and wear you out and drag you. Oh, this thing is, y'all, this thing is digging in me today. Oh, 
This is so powerful. He going to drag you in that spiritual courtroom. When I tell you, I'm talking about a literal drag because he's coming in with all the knowledge. For centuries, he's been doing this to your bloodline. He's been doing it to not just your bloodline, but D, I mean, he's been doing it to bloodlines for centuries. He don't care that you don't know what the rules are. That's your problem. And guess what? We are without excuse because we got a whole Bible that talks about the laws, the principles, right? That govern us. But when you don't know because you fail to what? Study. Let's go back to the scripture. Mm, mm, mm. Let's go back. Whew, this is deep, y'all. This one right here is so deep. Let's go back. Let's go right here. Second Timothy 2 and 15. What does he say? He says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. That's scripture. That's 2 Timothy 2 and 15. You think the enemy care that you don't know? He said, I'm going to drag you in this spiritual arena. Because you don't understand spiritual principles and laws. So because you don't understand it, you don't know how to deal with what has happened to you. You don't know how to confront it and address it. Not just you, but he's done it to me too. And he's going to continue to do it until you stand up and say, I'm not going to take this crap anymore. You got me twisted and bent over several barrels. If you, no, 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 no. This right here should make you run to that scripture. Run to that concordance and say, God, I don't know how. I don't know how to do this. And I'm probably the first one to pioneer this journey in my bloodline. But what I know is that this curse kept running and running in the bloodline until it ran into me. Now it's no more. I, I'm going to go ahead and put a stop to all of this. Stop it. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. When you understand the origin of where the distrust happened, when you understand the, 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 the genesis of that thing, mm. when you understand the genesis, then you can get to the revelation. I feel like I want, I'm telling y'all this thing is so deep in me today. It's so powerful. I, I want to run. I'm going to try not to run. But I want you all to get this. Because if you understand the genesis of what happened, then God will give you the revelation. But you got to go back to the constitution. That means where this thing was originated. How did God mean for me to live this thing? How did he mean for, what was his intention? Because whatever his intention was, you got to know that the enemy's intention is completely opposite. Well, let's go back to what his intention was. His intention was 3 John 2. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in good health, even as thy soul prospers. So you got to know that if God meant that for us, because he said it in the scripture, then what the enemy means is the exact opposite. So what the enemy wants is that you don't prosper, that you don't be in good health, even as your soul does not prosper. He wants your soul to be sick. Help us, Lord. Whew. Third Red Stallion, thank you so much, says only pregnancy, lost uh, emergency surgery, unable to have any after. Wow. Mm -mm -mm. God led me to get this message. Y'all. 
Staying close to God is the only thing that helps me cope. Look at this. The enemy has destroyed this woman's ability to even procreate, to reproduce. Look at that. Only pregnancy, just one. She lost it. Emergency surgery, and now she's unable to have any afterwards. Y'all, it's serious. It's so serious. Thank you so much for sharing that. And, and, and I'm 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 praying because my heart bleeds for people that 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 have had those things happen to you. Because when you don't understand what has happened in the bloodline, why this trust issue is showing up, it's because the enemy literally wants to take away your ability to live and thrive. Because he knows that the only way that you're going to be able to live and thrive is that you have faith in God. And that you are able to lean not on to lean not to your own understanding. That means that you have you got so much faith in God, even when you don't understand that you still trust in Him. He needs to destroy that in you, right? Because guess what? The Bible says faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So that means that you need to trust him where you can't trace him. You need to trust him even when you can't run reference on the situation. Meaning that you could be blind as a bat, but you still trust him. The enemy wants to remove that from you. I've shown you how he wants to do it and he, how he, he hits you even in the embryonic stage that goes over into the infancy, that then graduates from the infancy to your primary years, that then begins to form and it's formed and hardened in your adolescent years. And by the time you get to your teenage years, you messed up all the way around. That thing is in you. That thing is in you. And in order for it to be uprooted, in order for this thing to be pulled up out of you, you got to understand your weaponry. You got, you have to not even just understand it, you got to overstand it. Your weaponry. Understand the power that you hold, the backing that is connected to you when you walk in obedience. Yes, Akila, jacked. Look at that. Jacked. We just got jacked. The enemy don't care that you don't know. He don't care. You don't know. That's your problem. That's your issue. It ain't got nothing to do with him. Because he going to keep on doing what he doing. Okay? Satan is going to keep on doing what Satan does. And his kingdom. But if you continue to do the same thing you've been doing, then the perpetuation of what has happened in your bloodline thus far is going to continue to be perpetuated. Because it, you know what the enemy said? You know what he'll say? Who going to stop me? Who going to stop me? Who going to stop me? Man. That right there ought to make some of y'all go in your prayer closet. It is GTS. Obedience is a, is a game changer. It's a game changer. Job th uh, 13 and 15. Let's pull it up. I see you, Rebecca.
Let's see where we're going. Let's go to the KJV. He, the enemy is sitting there. That's what he's saying. Who going to stop me? And we just sitting there like, we ain't praying. Because I've been there. Wasn't reading my Bible. Forget fasting. I've been there. And the whole time I was in that despondent, that place of despondency, the enemy was dragging my behind. Job 13 and 15 says, though he slay me, yet I will trust in him, but I will maintain mine own ways before him. That's what Job said. That's a powerful verse, Rebecca. Thank you for putting that in there. Because Job said it. He said it. He said he don't care. He doesn't care about uh, about the the uh the the fact that he's been, the, that the enemy had hit everything he owned including his children i'm gonna still trust him and when you read the story of job you will see that god listen he restored everything 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 he restored it and then verse 16 she says verse 16 as well let's go to 16 he also shall be my salvation for an hypocrite shall not come before him. I'm telling you, listen, when we understand that the constitution of who we were or who we were supposed to be, when your constitution includes generational curses, when that constitution becomes amended by salvation, That was powerful. Jesus, I give you the glory. When your constitution becomes amended by salvation, then you must understand that that amendment requires a knowledge of the spiritual realm that you have never, ever had before. Because with salvation, you have already entered the battle of spiritual warfare. When you begin to name the name of Christ and look at look at how I position that. When your constitution cuz see some of us came into this this thing with a, a a a jacked up constitution like Akila said jacked. Your constitution included a generational curse. Some people had generational curses of all different types of autoimmune uh, illnesses in their family, high blood pressure, diabetes, all of that. All of that was written in your bloodline constitution. But when, 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 when you amend that original constitution with salvation, now you got the right to eternal life, you better take on. You better take on the power that work it within. And we better, we, we are going to be with, we're going to be completely vulnerable if you don't understand the benefits and the power that comes along with that amendment that you have made to your life. I'm trying to tell you. Come on. I'm trying to think it is it is absolutely paramount when you go into that covenant with Jesus Christ that you understand all the terms and conditions of that covenant that you have just entered into or that you have entered into with salvation. You are in covenant with Christ. We belong to him and have been brought with a price. So now that you have been brought with a price, you have to understand, we got to understand that there are benefits and there are things that we have available to us. But if you don't use them and you don't know how to use them, we, we are at a disadvantage, family. A grave disadvantage because the enemy wants you to be at a place of, of not understanding. He wants you to not know what the rules are the spiritual principles that govern your life, how to go in and uproot these things that have been planted in your bloodline, in your ancestral history for years. That Bible show you all of that, how to pull it up, how to tear it down. 
and how to recalibrate and re recalibrate yourself with the spirit of the living God and align your soul with your spirit. So the two are working in perfect harmony. That means that your spirit man is guiding you and it has governance over your soul. And what happens is the most vulnerable part of your soul, which is your emotion, is now covered. Why? Because you're no longer thinking and moving out of emotion, but you're thinking and moving out of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, which is in a place of logic. That's what the world calls it. But we know it's wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Trust can never be restored if you don't understand the genesis of how it was destroyed in your life. It didn't just start with the narcissist because they can, uh, they do, they can destroy our ability to trust. They can, but we serve a God that specializes in the process of rebuilding that trust. So once that constitution that you came to this world with has been amended through salvation, the next thing you need to know is you need to put on your whole armor. The whole armor of God. You got to be suited and booted for this flight, for this fight. The enemy ain't going to just let you just, just, just live. And, and he's not going to just let you thrive and, and, and uh, live. He wants you to just be in a place of existence only. Thank you. Uh, I don't know how to say your name. It's uh, I stay in stilettos. Okay. Thank you so much for your generosity. God bless you. Uh-huh. Thank you. Uh, I stay in stilettos again. Thank you so much. She said, my ex nart gave me HIV, my God, knowing he had hit it. Uh, had, knowing he had it and uh, then went and got married, trusting don't exist. Wow. Sis, I'm so sorry to hear that. That, that is, that's awful. Mm -mm -mm. May God bless you and restore you. You know, God can heal that. He really can. And I pray that God will give you a supernatural miracle based upon your obedience to him to carry out the rest of your journey, your purpose and your destiny, because God is concerned about our health. He said it in third John. Come on. He said it right there in third John too. He's concerned about our health. So if we know that he's concerned about our health, he can heal us. And whatever God comes to reveal, that means that he has an intention to heal it, but it's based upon your level of faith. It is based upon what you will trust God for. Hey, Jesus. Listen. You have to go back to the genesis of where this started in order to get the revelation. But you got to be willing to feel the pain and heal anyway. I tell you all that. And I'm not just talking to you. I'm talking to myself, too. I'm, I'm not I'm not one that uh, that stands in exception to this rule. Understand why the enemy never wants you to trust. Because he doesn't want you to be able to heal and move forward because faith is required to become healed and whole. So if you're wondering why you you just you've gotten to this place and it just feels like it's a hard stop. It's a hard stop, like you just can't move past that place. You got to check. You got to do so. You got to you got to do a spiritual checkup. 
Lord, where is my faith? Am I trusting you? Am I leaning not to my own understanding, but acknowledging you in all my ways because you said that you would direct my path? Faith is required. We will never be able to get to that place of healing, wholeness, and then one day boldness without the faith that God requires for us to access all spiritual blessings. They're already there for us. Already there. Already. We just got to go. How, we, we need to know how to go and pull it down. Y'all, I hope that y'all got something out of this. I hope you understand that your trust has to be in him, not in man. And when your trust is in God, he gives you that spirit of discernment because of his love for us. He wants us to be able to spiritually discern those things that are happening around us so that we can not only live, but we can thrive and we can be in good health even as our soul prospers. Remember, when you having uh, grandkids and people around you that are having babies around you, don't leave those babies open and vulnerable. When you hear that, when you hear of the pregnancy, you start going into spiritual warfare prayer. Do battle for that baby because the enemy wants to take them out, even in the embryonic stage and shown up in infancy as well. The earlier he can hit that, that child, the better. But this is why we have trust issues. It's not just because of the narcissist. It's because we, we encountered that before the narcissist at some point in our lives. And the only way that you're going to be able to rebuild it is that you got to go back to where it was destroyed. This is why I, 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 I pulled out those deep things that we don't, we don't think about. That, that the, y your mind cannot go there. Because if God hasn't given you that spiritual gift for it to go there, then your mind won't go there. But understand that and know that God is here. He's telling us this because he wants us to thrive and he wants us to move forward and to be able to uh, pull down, ascertain those spiritual blessings that he's given us because they're for us. Because guess what happens is if we don't take them, the enemy finds a way to take them through us by getting us into demonic covenants with people around us that mean us no good and no spirits that these people carry begin to siphon the gifts, just like the narcissist did, begins to siphon our energies and our gifts that God has given us. And guess what? The enemy will steal it by association because you come in covenant with these people. I've, I've done it myself. And this is why the Bible says that it talks about the treasures of darkness. Let's go to the scripture and it's going to be the last one and I'll let y'all go. But <clears throat> the treasures of darkness. Let's go to it in KJV. Isaiah 43, excuse me, Isaiah 45 and 3. Let me read it from King James. It says this, Isaiah 4, 45 and 3, and I will give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places that thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which called thee by name, I am the God of Israel. Hmm. What is he saying here? Everything that the enemy stole from you, all of those, see, the, the, the kingdom of darkness, whatever they steal from you, that becomes the treasures of their darkness.
Because see, remember, they don't have anything over there. The enemy can't create anything. Anything, and, and matter of fact, the whole, that whole world that he has is a dead world, even though it's still living and it's operating, the kingdom is operating to be without God means that it's, it's spiritually dead, right? But he's saying that I will give you the treasure. So what he's saying is I'll go back into the enemy's camp and I'll take what has been uh, taken away from you and I'll reveal to you the riches of secret places, Right? That means some of y'all want to know where to go put your money. Some of y'all want to know which investments, which stocks to do. God will lead and guide you and show you all of these things. And he, why is he going to do it? Because he wants you to know that he is God and he is God alone. Hmm. My prayer is simple today. Let this thing hit your spirit. Let it hit your spirit. Let it be, let it take root in, in, in this fertile ground and germinate and produce faith that will shake hell. Produce a faith and a trust in you that will shake hell because your faith is not supposed to be in man. Your faith is supposed to be in God. This is why we are to be led by the spirit of God. Because if we're led by the spirit, then we won't, we will avoid all of these, pit, these pitfalls far. We get into these places because we are being led by our flesh. So we fall into those things where the flesh leads us. But God is saying today that he wants to restore our trust which it means that our faith is going to be restored in him so that we can begin to not only live, but thrive in those places where he has called us to be so that we can meet and we can complete our kingdom assignment here on earth. Because I'm sure you like myself, do not want to stand before the judgment seat of Christ where you're going to get your reward because there will be rewards given out. And he say to you, you wicked un and unprofitable servant. Let's go to that scripture and really be out of here. <clears throat> Matthew 25 and 30. Let's go to the scripture. He says, and Matthew 25 and 30, he says, and cast ye the wicked unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Listen, that's the, that's, that's the, that's the great white throne judgment. That's the great white throne judgment. When he says, you wicked and unprofitable servant, that ain't even standing before the reward. That's the great white throne. That you, that right there will take you, he said, cast them in the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Because we didn't get it. We missed it. And the devil is a liar. So, we're praying. Father, I thank you. Thank you so much for this time of teaching, Lord, this time of fellowship. Lord, I just thank you. My God, I'm so full. It's overwhelming what you have shared with us today by your spirit. And so, Father, my prayer is simple. That, Lord, these words that you have spoken through this, your servant, will fall onto fertile ground that it will begin to take root and the seed will begin to germinate and grow. Lord, that the people that are under the sound of my voice, even those that will watch this live stream on replay, that God, you will help us to recover all that was lost in our original constitution 
that God, as we have taken on the amendment of salvation, that we will understand and we will come to know you in a deeper sense. Father, that you would good things and you will good things for our lives. But Father, we have to know how to trust and believe in a God that we have never seen. And you understand the challenge that lies before us because you said in your word that greater works shall we do because we have trusted, yet we have not seen. So Father, you understood very well what the challenge was going to be before us. And so Father, we thank you for your graciousness. Father, we thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your power, your love, your generosity, your revelation, even the Genesis. God, we thank you. We give you, so, we give you all the glory and the praise, Lord, that all generational curses that were presented and brought up in this live stream, even those that will watch on the replay, that God, you will give your, your people, give us the ability to tear those things down in the rim of the spirit, Lord, that by your spirit, you will show us how, when, and where to pray. And Lord, you will give us the boldness to confront those different altars and demonic forces that are fighting against us in our bloodlines. Father, we pull it down in the name of Jesus. We harness the power of heaven and all of the spiritual backing that you have given us. It's not us that people should worry about. It's the heavenly host that backs us and the spirit of the living God that guides us into all truth. So Father, we thank you that the fire of heaven will burn up everything in the bloodline that is not like you that you will begin to change our hearts and our minds because our willingness to be obedient to your word because of it. And we know that there is a blessing in the obedience. And we know that, there, that without faith, it is impossible to please you. So Lord, we thank you that our trust is restored on today. We thank you that our trust is not in man, but it is in you. And you will show us through discernment who to trust and how to trust. Because of the love that you have for us, you will never leave us, nor you, will you forsake us. You've already told us that when the enemy comes in like a flood, that the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. So it doesn't matter how the enemy hits us. You've already let us know that we have the power to overpower the enemy. So God, we thank you for the angelic forces that do battle for us in the spiritual realms and heavenly places. And we thank you that our minds and our hearts are covered and saturated with the blood of Jesus. Lord, place an impenetrable barrier of light and fire around us. Lord God, that nothing shall by any means harm us and no weapon formed against our trust and our faith and even us, Lord, shall be able to prosper. So Father, we thank you today. We give you the glory and the honor for what you have shared with us on today. And we bow before your presence with all humility and say, thank you, Lord. And some even saying, I surrender to you. There are some even saying, Lord, come into my heart today. Be my savior and be my Lord. Take complete governance over my life. Thank you, Father, for the new converts that will come from this message. Thank you for the restoration that will come from this message and the building of the faith and trust. In the mighty, powerful name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare that trust has been restored on today amongst those that are willing to allow you to do the work in them. That faith, their faith in you, Father, has been restored. 
We decree and declare it to be done and it shall not be otherwise. In Jesus name we pray. Thank God and amen. 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 So thank you. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. I see you, Sakina. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you so much. I thank you all. Y'all don't forget to share this message. Um, I know we don't normally meet at this hour, but I just know that God is doing something miraculous and that he's going to show himself powerfully um, in your lives. Those of you that are really going to take this message and allow this thing to take root and to grow in you. Amen. So I love you, family. Thank you all so, so much. And I hugs and kisses to you all. Of course, you know, I will see you all on the next video, family. And I will see you all healed and whole at the top. Hello, Shabella. Thank you all so much. I love you, family. Y'all have a good day and take care of yourselves. See you on the next video.